Hello, this is Charting Man Dan of The Chart Guys, where we teach the little guy and girl how to utilize charts to manage their own trades and investments. What do I mean by the little guy and girl? Well, we just had two directives signed halting the implementation of a rule that requires financial advisors to act in the best interests of their client. Let that sink in a little bit. The big wigs on Wall Street can play with your retirement and hard-earned money without your best interests at heart. We currently have hundreds of members taking charge of their financial future, and we would love for you to come check out a free week with no credit card required to see if our services would be beneficial on your path to financial independence as well. What we offer, we have a separate course of over five hours in length on when to enter and exit positions. And in terms of what we do daily, we have nightly videos, key levels updated each morning before the bell, two and a half hours of live daily web webcam coverage in the morning and in the afternoon, and over seven hours of educational videos. All of these links can be found in the description of this video. Come check us out. Thanks for watching. Let's get on to the technical analysis. Checking in on the dollar, gold, and miners. So the dollar seeing some upside. We're over that 10-day moving average resistance for the first time since we hit the high and started pulling back. But we still have some work to do for the bulls to prove themselves. We have a bullish MACD cross underway. But we have to break the lower high pattern, and that is 100, make that 10102. If we cannot break 10102, it's just another lower high in this downtrend, and we'll be looking to head back quickly to 99.43. So what I'm keeping an eye out for is a potential bearish reversal head and shoulders pattern, but it has a long way to play out yet, and I would not be making any trades based on this pattern. We would have to see some further upside and then a rejection and a move back down to this key double low of consolidation. But as of right now, a short-term bounce is underway, and on the weekly time frame, we can see that the bulls are forming a pretty solid bullish reversal candlestick at this point. Get rid of this horrible drawing. So attempting to form a bullish reversal candlestick and we need to break the high of last week, that 10102 level. So a little bit of upside today in the dollar. We saw some consolidation in gold. This is the daily time frame. The bulls did buy the dip. And we look at the hourly time frame, and it's pretty healthy consolidation. I had a, a support line I was watching and a resistance line. The bulls broke that. But we do have a double top at the high of yesterday. One, or make that 1235.43, 1235.50. And we topped out at 1235.59 and 56. So a couple pennies there, clear resistance that the bulls need to break above, and we have a tightening range with that little double top and our higher lows. So as long as the bulls continue to hold 1227.64, they remain in control. If we lose that level, we know some further profit taking and consolidation is coming. So as of right now, lots of strength. We can get rid of these lines that are no longer relevant, and we can draw an uptrend support line hitting our higher lows to be watching as we trade overnight. So it's going to be an interesting overnight session as we're either going to see a clear bull break or a clear break of this uptrend support line by the time we wake up tomorrow morning. And got a question about why today there was a, a period of time where gold was going up and miners, JNUG specifically, was going down. And we need to remember that there is not a direct correlation between gold and these miners. While there is a common correlation, and it is often the case that it is directly related, the correlation shift, the what depends on the direction that miners move are the price of gold the overall stock market because remember we're not trading gold when we trade these names we're trading miners they're individual companies and they are on the stock exchange so they are subject to the algorithms that control the overall entire stock market so if the market is dumping we're going to see some headwind against these bull names these bull miners and it's up to a gold move in the opposite direction to really prop them up so it's gold, the market, and then obviously the individual miners themselves. So seeing the significant move that we had, even if we had a, a strong gold and a strong market, if people want to take profit and supply versus demand of shares of these ETFs is, is skewed, meaning more people are trying to sell, there's more supply of, shells, of shares than there are demand, people aren't trying to buy after a 20 plus percent day, a lot more people are selling, that's going to affect the price of these ETFs regardless of what gold and the market is doing. So supply and demand of these shares of these ETFs is a factor as well. So GDX is a bearish reversal candlestick with an upper wick of profit taking, but we are still holding the upper Bollinger Band, we still had a higher low and a higher high on the daily, and the bulls are still maintaining breakout mode. We're going to be watching this upper Bollinger Band very close on GDX and GDXJ because if we lose those levels, that will tell us consolidation is coming. The 200-day moving average support to hold for GDX is 2497. 
currently still intact and on the weekly time frame still bulls in control not not a very significant upper wick no bearish reversal candlestick on the weekly time frame and what occurs with gold after hours on that pattern i just drew on the hourly is likely going to dictate how we start the day tomorrow so checking in on gdxj pretty similar candlestick a little bit more of an upper wick we had a little bit more follow through to the upside but it is a bearish reversal candlestick on the daily time frame and the same story with the upper bollinger band support it's going to be in the mid to upper 41 dollar range tomorrow and if we see a red day and a close below that upper bollinger band we will confirm the bearish reversal candlestick and we'll be looking for normal healthy consolidation following the breakout so it's still a strong weekly chart breaking the lower high pattern for the bulls upper bollinger band resistance we need these bollinger bands to begin to level out and ascend to create room to the upside for these bulls to keep running and that is not occurring right now so that's going to occur over a couple of weeks so the simplest answer as to why some of these miners might have been going down with gold still going up is profit taking we saw a 20 plus percent day yesterday look at where we've come in the past five days so we had the low on february 1st 37 dollars and here we are hitting 42.84. So that is almost a 20% move on the underlying name. And you'd multiply that by three times on names like JNUG or NUGT. And you're going to be seeing 40 plus 50% gains in the past you know, five days. So there's going to be profit taking there. And that, in my opinion, is what we saw for that divergence in the normal correlation that we usually see with gold. So looking for a little bit of short-term pullback, gold itself, the commodity, still very strong, key tightening pattern to be watching, and we're going to be watching to see how much momentum the dollar has, but right now, gold has been holding up very well, regardless of dollar strength and regardless of what the market is doing. So gold is in its own little world trading right now. The correlations have weakened between those other two factors. I'm going to keep a close eye to see when it picks back up again, but as of right now, just watching gold by itself on this hourly channel. I appreciate you watching. We'll check back in tomorrow to see if we confirm these reversal candlesticks, update those upper Bollinger Band levels on GDX and GDXJ at the open tomorrow. Have a great night. Thanks for watching.